White Strikes Mayhem is one of ESO's biannual PvP focused in game events that takes place in all three of the game's PvP zones Battlegrounds, Cyrodiil, and Imperial City. While this event is big time hype for PvP lovers, the same sentiment can't always be shared by PvE mains. In this video, we will give you several tips and tricks from a PvEer's perspective on how to survive and make the most of the event. If you're interested in a condensed written guide version of this video, you can check out our website at thegameroom.tv. For some, Battlegrounds can be the least stressful PvP option as you can manage to get your event tickets and loots just by participating. No need to get good. Event tickets are awarded through Battlegrounds by completing one of the daily quests. If PvP is not your jam and you get To the Victor daily quest, you can drop it and get another one. To the Victor requires that you win three Battleground matches, which can be pretty difficult if you're not really that great at PvP. The other two quests are much easier in our opinion. The Test of Metal quest will need you to earn 1,000 metal points in Battleground matches. If you play the objective, it isn't super difficult to earn medals, even if you're as bad as I am. And I am pretty bad. In our opinion, Let the Games Begin quest is the easiest of them all. All you need to do is participate in five Battleground matches. That's it. It does not matter if you win or lose, you just need to show up. That I can do. As a PvP noob, my favorite PvP content is Cyrodiil. I do not like the close-up sweaty tangle that is PvP. My go-to during the event is to earn mega amounts of double AP by repairing walls and doors. Repair kits can be purchased with AP or gold from the siege merchants at your main bases or any keep, outpost, or resources you own. Oftentimes you can pop from keep to keep and repair walls and doors that have been neglected after intense battles. No actual PvP is required to earn AP here. While this won't necessarily get you any tickets for the event, you can definitely still earn a lot of AP. If you're looking to earn tickets by completing your daily quests, there are a few options that are less PvP sweaty here. The first option is to stand just outside the fire and defend your keep. You can stand on the walls and attack the incoming hostiles with siege weapons. By doing this, you will earn AP passively for defending your keep, and if you manage to kill a player with your siege, you will earn progress towards bounty missions, which require you to kill enemy players in general or of a certain class. What also helps with these quests is joining a group. Maybe you're like me and not likely to be the one to take down another player, but grouping with others will help you out here a lot. While in group, if you contribute to the combat in any way, you will receive credit for killing a player even if you're not the one that throws the killing blow. The more people in the group, the faster it may be to get those kill quests done. If you're cool running in large groups at the ground level and closer to the fire, many of the other quests such as capturing resources, keeps, and scrolls are much easier in a group. Check the group finder or be on the lookout in zone chat for open groups. Even in a group, these can be a little bit more challenging, so always check the map first to see if it's worth the effort. If you have a fast mount and want to avoid people as much as possible, scouting missions are a great option. Those quests will have you head to a specific keep or resource and report on the defenses. Hop on your mount and run like the wind. Hit the synergy to take notes and then head back to base. Your quest is complete and you're on your way to getting those tickets. If you're looking for some other PvE-focused quests, you can complete the variety of town dailies that are available. These quests will ask you to complete a PvE-focused task, such as a fetch quest or clearing out a delve. Speaking of delves, many don't know that you can get a 20% AP bonus for one hour after defeating a delve boss. But either way, these types of quests are great for PvEers. However, those spots are often camped by griefers, so be careful. The best part about Cyrodiil is that you won't lose anything no matter how much you die. Go in with a clear intention of dying and you'll be just fine. One other general tip when getting some loot from your Cyrodiil daily quests, Arena Gladiator's proofs can be obtained once per day per account from Gladiator's rucksacks, which are received by completing a conquest daily in Cyrodiil. 
If you're looking to maximize how many proofs you can get, open these coffers once per day, even if you turn in more than one quest. Out of all the PvP zones, Imperial City, in my opinion, can be by far the most challenging for those that are not great at 1vxing PvP situations. My first tip for our friends that have Imperial City PvP on the bottom of their must-do list is to preload completed quests before the event begins. Imperial City is often quiet at obscure hours outside of event times, so you are much more likely to get your quests done in peace uninterrupted. Our guilds on PCNA and Xbox NA run guild events to help our PvP challenge friends, like myself, preload completed quests before the event begins. When the event hits, I pop into Imperial City, turn my quest in, get my ticket, and get out of Dodge. Feel free to join our Discord if you'd like to join us. Link below. Okay, friends, for the love of Sithis, bank your Telvar stones before leaving the sewer safe zone. Telvar is the only thing in game you can lose to other players. When you die, you will lose half of your Telvar currency. Go to the bank and deposit using the drop down menu in the deposit currency screen. Telvar will be blue. You cannot lose it from your bank, only on your person. There are Telvar earning multipliers for having Telvar in your pocket. More risk, more reward. But if you're 100% guaranteed to die like me, don't risk it, bank it. Strength in numbers is a common theme in PvP, especially if you are a player less skilled in PvP play. Don't be afraid to group up or follow a larger group of people. It may save your life and definitely some Telvar. To get back to your faction's base in Imperial City, you need to go through the sewers. If you need a quick port, find a good hiding spot, open your Alliance War menu, and queue for any Cyrodiil campaign, ideally an open one, and you will be ported out of Imperial City into your faction's main base in Cyrodiil. You can then re-queue for Imperial City to get back to your base to finish your business. A few extra load screens can definitely save some Telvar. If you like to live life dangerously and you plan on taking the sewers, here are the sewer entrances closest to your faction's home base. If you are Ebon Heart Pact, take the Arena District or Memorial District entrances. If you are Daggerfall Covenant, take the Elven Gardens District or Nobles District entrances. Finally, if you are Aldmeri Dominion, take the Temple District or Arboretum District entrances. Also remember that sewer and base entrance spots are often camped by griefers, so be careful. If you are looking to complete your event achievements and need the local patrolling horrors, here's where you can find each of them. In the Arboretum, you will find Lady Maligda and Yacenda Resplendent. In the Arena District, you'll find Glorgalock the Destroyer and King Krago. In the Elven Gardens District, you'll find the Screeching Matron and Zol the Ever Wakeful. In the Memorial District, you'll find Nunatak and Volgas. In the Nobles District, you'll find Amonkrol and Baron Thirst. And finally, in the Temple District, you will find Immolator Shar and Mazaluhad. Another note, bombers and gankers often follow these bosses around to lay claim to your Telvar once you've defeated the boss. Another general tip regarding loot, Siege of Cyrodiil Merits can be obtained once per day per account from Siege Master's Coffers, which are awarded when you turn in your daily quests. If you're looking to maximize how many merits you can get, open your coffers once per day, even if you turn in more than one quest. So those are our tips for all of the different PvP zones, but in general, we do have some other great PvP tips. First off, your character must be level 10 to participate in any PvP activities, so make sure you level before the event so you don't waste any time. If you are under level 50, there are some special battlegrounds and serial campaigns you can join with other lobbies. You will earn both AP and Telvar from completing activities and killing opponents during this event. Both of these currencies can be spent on special items, including style pages, golden vendor items, siege equipment, rare materials, gear coffers, pets, costumes, you name it. This event is definitely a great way to fill your collections book with all of the PVP associated items. 
And if you're here to make the big bucks during this event, here are some of the best selling items to flip. Rune boxes contain items such as costumes and pets. These sell well a couple months after the event when the market is much less saturated. You can find different rune boxes in both Cyrodiil and Imperial City. Hakejo runes, which are found in Imperial City, are really great to make some cash. Again, you're going to want to wait a couple months until the market is a little less saturated from everybody selling their PvP goods, but Hakejo runes are associated with tri-stat enchantments, which is very important for a lot of end game play, so they often go for a lot of money. Powerful Assault Gear, and specifically the Powerful Assault Ice Staff, is a must have for PvE tanks. The only way to get these are by gambling with the Powerful Assault Rune Boxes that you find in Imperial City at the Merchant in the Sewer. It is a random draw and these are not curated, so the odds of getting it are definitely lower, so when you can find an Ice Staff, it will sell for a really good amount of money. Deadly Strike weapons are also a really good opportunity to make some cash. These can be found in the town of Bruma in Cyrodiil. Now note that your faction does need to own the town to use the merchants. So you either want to make sure you go in on a character whose faction already owns it, or you are going to have to try and flip it. But if you are able to get your hands on those Deadly Strike weapons, especially the daggers, you'll definitely be able to make a quick buck on that. If you are going to change which character you're on, make sure you deposit your AP in the bank so the character that is the appropriate faction will be able to access the AP to go make that purchase. There you have it, the Fox Den's tips for making the most out of White Strikes Mayhem as a pve -er. I will say this though, as a day one player that panicked the first time she accidentally loaded into Cyrodiil not knowing what it was, I have since found my love for some PvP action. I have an absolute blast in Cyrodiil these days, especially when I'm with some of my best friends. My best advice is to go in with a group that has one mission, to have some laid back fun and die a lot. We have watched our guild members go from hating PvP to becoming grand overlords and running PvP groups. The right people make all the difference. So happy PvPing, and if you need a group or a guild to run with, you can check out the Fox Den, aka the Fox Den Underground, on all regions, all platforms. If you're looking for some really great PvP builds and need a little help getting yourself ready, you can check out the gameroom.tv for a variety of PvP builds that will help fit any class and any style of PvP play. And as always, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notifications to receive alerts for when we post more content.